Welcome to St. D on this Monday Thursday as we remember the last meal that Jesus shared with his disciple as he knelt down and washed their feet. This evening, I invite you to bring your body into the worship of God. You may do so standing or seated by listening to your heartbeat or noticing the rise and fall of your abdomen with each breath. A call to worship is a call to presence. We long to, fully, to be fully present here and to feel God's presence here. Notice the space around us, the way it looks, smells, and sounds. All our senses, we recognize the sacred space. We gather as good creation, wonderfully made. 
stand as you are able as we sing together hymn number 292, What Wondrous Love Is This? hear the story of Jesus washing the disciples' feet on the night of his betrayal and arrest. It is a story of deep intimacy and sacred connection. It is also a story about human resistance to God's grace and our discomfort with the ways Jesus demands the disruption of hierarchies. In this story, Simon Peter first objects to Jesus' plan to wash his feet. Jesus does not rebuke him, but he does insist, for he knows what is to come. As we prepare to lay down our burdens before God in confession, we place our trust in God's desire to know us and be with us. As we enter into the sacred story of John's Gospel, let us take a few moments to notice our feet. Wiggle your toes. Plant your feet firmly on the ground. As you experience these sensations, consider the wonder of God. 
who meets us not only from on high, but also kneeling at our feet. Confession returns us to our bodies by reminding us that God claims us exactly as we are. Through repentance, we name that which we have left undone and ask for the help of God and our community to seek repair, restoration, and renewal. And so let us now pray together our prayer of confession. Loving God, you pour your grace out upon us exactly as we are. But we confess we are suspicious and react from fear of scarcity. You invite us to take our shoes off and receive the care our bodies need. But we sit on our heels. We sort bodies into worthy and unworthy ones to match our insecurities. We reject and punish fat bodies, disabled bodies, transgender bodies, and racialized bodies, even when these bodies are our very own. God, remind us that we are made in your image. Help us learn to receive from your abundance so we can share all that we have with others. Let us see that the cups we longingly hold out are already full. May they overflow so that we will have enough. As he does with Peter and the foot washing, Jesus transforms our confusion and rejection into joy and connection. With God's help and mercy, we can reciprocate abundance with one another and with creation. In Jesus Christ, we are loved and befriended by God. Thanks be to God. You may remain seated as we sing hymn number 273, Jesus' hands were kind hands. Mm -hmm. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. 
Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than the master, nor are messengers greater than one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. The words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This evening, you may be seated. This evening, we will be remembering our baptisms. And so, in a few minutes, I will pray over the water, and then you are invited to come and touch the water, to wash your hands, to make the sign of the cross on yourself, to spend as much time as you need at the water. You're invited to kneel and to pray. You're invited to take this time to feel Jesus' hands upon you, to experience the water. With simple elements and simple acts, Jesus flipped the script of power to bring about impossibilities for God's love in the world. Before his betrayal and death, Jesus touched his followers and sealed the connection. Jesus taught us to wash one another's feet so that we might witness each other's goodness and be made clean. Through the waters of our baptism, God claims us as God's own and marks the calling for our lives onto our bodies. Together, we will remember our baptisms. But first, let us pray. God, who poured forth water, God, who formed each one of us we give you thanks for the sacrament of baptism. Allow the cool drip of water on our bodies to bring us closer to you so that we might live as your people with justice, kindness, and humility. As we remember your promises to us, renew in us a heart of compassion for others and help us recognize your presence in all we need. Amen. At this time, you are invited to come forward and spend time with these, our baptismal.
The water will remain here throughout the service. And in a few minutes when we come to the table for communion, if you would like to once again touch the water, it is always here to welcome you. And right now to stand as you are able, as we sing together, take your shoes off. You will find that it is a familiar hymn and the words on the back of your bulletin. Margaret will play it through once so that we know what tune we're singing.
Author and researcher Brene Brown said, You are imperfect. You are wired for struggle, but you are worthy of love and belonging. And boy, if that doesn't fit into Holy Week, particularly on this Mommy Thursday. In tonight's text, we hear the story of Jesus' last supper with his disciples from the washing of their feet to the new commandment he gives. From the reveal of the plan for Judas to betray Jesus to Peter begging for not just his feet, but his head and his hands also. And then we close with hearing Christ give us the new commandment. Love one another. Foot washing is a practice of radical vulnerability, of being seen and known. We see imperfection and struggle across this final gathering of Jesus and the disciples. From Judas and Peter to the rest of the disciples attempting to understand what Jesus is telling them. There is imperfection and struggle as the disciples try to decipher what it means for them to follow in the example set before them by Christ. However, regardless of the disciples' imperfection and struggle, Christ kneels before them and washes their feet. Regardless of their imperfection and struggle, Christ reminds them that they are to go and do likewise. Regardless of their imperfection and struggle, Christ reminds them that the greatest commandment is love. The origin of the word mandi is mandatum, which is Latin for commandment. And on this Commandment Thursday, we reflect upon and remember the deep love of Christ, who embodied love and humbled himself before his friends and fully saw them in all of their struggle and imperfection. On this Commandment Thursday, we reflect upon and remember the deep love of Christ, who fully sees us in all of our struggle and imperfection and still invites us to the table. Tonight, we are standing on holy ground. And I hear echoes of Moses in front of the burning bush after God has called out to him saying, remove the sandals from your feet. For the place on which you are standing is holy ground. 
God continues to speak to Moses, declaring himself as the God of Moses' father, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Moses' initial reaction is to hide his face in fear. But God goes on to call him to free the Israelites, to lead God's people out of Egypt with the promise that God will be with him. The disciples have removed their shoes and are standing on holy ground before Christ, who kneels before them to wash their feet. The love of Christ spills over the basin, splashing on the floor, rippling out, extending love and support and grace. The love of Christ spills over as he washes each of their feet, knowing the actions they would be taking in the days to come. The betrayal, the denial, the deserting. And now we are invited to take off our shoes and stand on holy ground. We are invited to take off our shoes and remove any barriers, the walls and protective layers we have built up to protect ourselves from the pain and the vulnerability of this world. We are invited to take off our shoes and bring our full selves before Christ, allowing our full selves to be loved fully by God. We are invited to take off our shoes and come to the table. We are invited to take off our shoes and be invited in so that we, but in by God, so that we might know that we are indeed standing on holy ground. This invitation does not stop in this space. Jesus washing our feet and inviting us to the table is not the end. It's the beginning. It's the beginning of the new commandment that Christ gives us. That we love one another as Christ has loved us. It is the beginning of Christ's love rippling out into the world. It is the beginning of letting Christ love us fully so that we might love one another fully. The Reverend Dr. Kosuki Kuyama was a theologian and professor at Union Seminary. Throughout his life, he used metaphor and theology to convey the ways in which Christianity is compatible with Asian traditions without compromising the message of the gospel. He was baptized at age 15 in 1945 in Tokyo. His obituary, written by Douglas Martin, says of that experience, he was struck by the courageous words of the presiding pastor, who told him that God called on him to love everybody, even the Americans. He spent his life devoted to education and sharing the gospel. And once in discussing death, Dr. Koyama brought up the story of Jesus washing the disciples' feet. He said Jesus would be with the others the same way, quote, looking into our eyes and heart. Jesus will say, you've had a difficult journey. You must be tired and dirty. Let me wash your feet. The banquet is ready. We have been on a difficult journey. We are tired. We are dirty. 
We are ready for the end of this journey to be here. But the journey isn't quite over yet. And even though we are still on this journey, we are invited to the table. The banquet is ready. Christ has kneeled before us, extending his radical and unconditional love. May we go and share that same love, willing to be vulnerable and truly see and know in the name of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer. Amen. We now come to our time of prayer. And I'll be sharing uh, prayers of the people that was written by Adrian White with Sanctified Life. Let us pray. God among us, when we cry out for justice, you hear us. When we fall to our knees, you witness us. When we lean into your comfort, you hold us. When we lose our way, you guide us. Hear our prayers. Say with us here as we seek your way toward hope and wholeness. We name, O oh God, that at times it is hard to stay loving in the face of cruelty, neglect, and harm. Yet even when Jesus knew his friends would betray and abandon him, he showed us how to center our whole selves in your love, instead of the hatred of people and the injustice of systems of power. May we go and do likewise as he has called us to do, so that our love for others will be a testimony to all you have done in our lives. Through the life and ministry of Jesus, you taught us how to love fiercely, how to honor one another fully, and how to serve with humility and kindness. Through grace, you join us together as one body. Be with us today and every day as we seek to pour out love as disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen. This evening, we will be participating in Holy Communion through intuition. After we have completed the liturgy, you will be invited forward and will be given a piece of bread. You are invited to dip it in a cup and then eat it. The altar is open for prayer. The waters are open as well. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done no little. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love, we have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, 
hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to God. God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. From the earth you bring forth bread and create the fruit of the vine. You formed us in your image, delivered us from captivity and, and made covenant to be our sovereign God. You fed us manna in the wilderness and gave grapes as evidence of the promised land. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. When we had turned aside from your way and abused your gifts, you gave us in him your crowning gift, emptying himself that our joy might be full. He fed the hungry, healed the sick, ate with the scorned and forgotten, washed his disciples' feet, and gave a holy meal as a pledge of his abiding presence. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink this, do so in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. Him. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
Lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many partake in the one loaf. The bread which we break is sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is sharing in the blood of Christ. At this time, I invite those assisting in me. The table is set, and you are invited. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery and what you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As we come to the close of our service this evening, I invite you to stand as you're able as we sing together hymn number 640, Take Our Bread.
Thank you. 